Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, spring is heating up, and so are the hot topics. We're breaking down all of today's juiciest. And young Hollywood star Kiki Palmer is here, telling us all about her new movie, Brotherly Love. Plus, Wendy's saying it like she means it, answering all of your most pressing questions. Now, here's Wendy! It's time for Hot Topics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, (laughs) thank you, thank you. Well, I've broken my pinky toe for the second time in like two years. That's okay, I just wrapped it up in some tape and came on out here. (laughs) I bumped into a wall at home. Have you ever broken your pinky toe? I feel like cutting it off and buying another one. But you can't do anything, there's no operation. You just tape it and wear flats and keep it moving. So look, this thing, um, Uh, This thing with Sofia Vergara and her ex-boyfriend Nick Loeb, the Onion Crunch King, is really getting messy boots. Well, according to our friends at In Touch uh, Magazine, um, Sofia and Nick, they were together for four years, okay? So six months before they broke up, they decide they wanna have a child. Now she already has a son who's in his 20s, his name is Manolo, after the character in Scarface. And, but Nick, Nick ha, has no kids, so she wanted to gift him you know, a baby. And they were together, like I said, for four years. Six months before they broke up, remember, they, they did this thing where they took her egg and his sperm and the embryo, and they had three of them up in the lab. And they were all three girls. That's how much we know about this. I didn't know that you could tell the sex you know, when they're in the Petri dish, but okay. <laughs> so three little girls sitting in a lab. <laughs> <laughs> There's a joke in there someplace. Um, Anyway, and so, but now they're broken up. And, um, you know, she is engaged to the fabulous Joe Manganiello. She's, she's going on with her life. But now, Nick has decided that, she, that he wants the embryos to have a baby of his own. Well, here's where it gets sticky, because both of their DNAs are, you know, in or those embryos. So he does have a point. Sophia wants the embryos destroyed. Well, cause she's no longer with Nick. You know, she's moved on to um, Joe. But Nick wants to, like I just said, have a baby. So where do you stand on this? Clap if you think that Nick has a great point. Wow. You guys are so unfair, such man haters. <laughs> I mean, even I, and you know, I can be very judgmental and closed minded sometimes, but I, even I think that he does have a point. I mean, he has no children. There are three girls sitting in a lab in a Petri dish and he wants to go it alone and have a baby. The problem is, is that that child will always be half Sophia's and half his. This is where it gets sticky. And you can say, well, it's a really womanly move for Nick to be jumping up and down like this. But no, it isn't. He's also a Republican. He believes in... (laughs) I mean, not that that has anything to do with a lot, but kind of sort of it does. Like he doesn't believe in abortion and, and you know, he believes that a child is born at inception. And if you can tell that it's a baby girl, then oh my gosh, yeah. maybe he has a point. <laughs> you know, maybe he has a point. My thought is, and I'm on team nobody here, cause both of them, to me, both of them were less than smart. You're not with somebody for four years and then you go um, six months and you know, at the, towards the end and you, you do these embryos without realizing there's groundswell and something's going on with this relationship. You know how before you break up with somebody, you know how maybe that last year is real crusty. <laughs> you know, like, 
I don't believe I love him. I'm gonna stick around and just test my feelings, but we are not buying a condo together in Boca. I, I am gonna start siphoning money out of our joint account if, if, you're, if you're that person. You, do you understand what I'm saying? So in the event of these embryos, the very least these two people should have done was get a contract drawn up. In the event that we break up, that's it. If that happened to me, that's exactly what i do. And if that didn't work, guess what else I think I'd do? I think, I think I would invite him over and tell them that you know, I have them and show him the lab work and then trip on the corner of the rug. <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you know, in this case, you have to hatch a plan. You know, you pay off a nurse in the lab, right? All I'm saying, Nick, is that you have a point. Sophia, what are we gonna do about this? Because this guy right here will not leave you alone. And you know, I will be following that story. So speaking of kids, Billy Joel, you heard, is becoming a dad again at 66. He's 66 years old. In my mind, I always thought Billy Joel had like four kids. I don't know why, but you know, he only has one daughter, friend to the show, Alexa Ray. That's it. So this will be his second child and he's been with his longtime girlfriend, Alexis, um, for, I know, that could get awkward. <laughs> Screaming the wrong name. Um, anyway, um, he's been with his longtime girlfriend. She's 33 years old. They met at a restaurant out in the Hamptons. So you never know where you're gonna find love. And she doesn't have any children, so I guess he said, well, you know what, this will seal our relationship. They're not married, it's his girlfriend, and they're expecting a baby girl this summer. And we were talking, yeah. Now, we were talking during our, um, our Hot Topics morning meeting, and I was asked, do I think that it's selfish that a 66-year-old man is gonna have a baby? Because after all, you know, when, when the boy is, uh, or when the little girl is 18, Billy's gonna be 84. When she's 25, he's gonna be 91. And when she's 34, he'll be 100. So, you know, when you put it in that perspective, it does seem like a selfish thing for an old man to be having a baby, on one hand. And I'm not, I'm not trying to count anybody's money, but all I'm saying is, when you're wealthy, sometimes it makes it a little easier. Like, you know, raising a son myself, I know, you know, a boy has got to, um, you know, have a father to play catch with and play basketball with and, and careen down the West Side Highway with no seat belts because I'm not in the car. <laughs> you know, you know, guys and their sons, they do different things and it's really selfish that this Billy won't be able to do much of anything with it. All right, it's a little girl coming, but still. You know, girl, uh, fathers and daughters do things together also. So putting it in perspective like that, clap if you think it's selfish for an old man to be having a baby. Well, back to the money thing, because I was about to mention money. Uh, you know, for your average Joe on Main Street, that might be real selfish. But if you got Billy Joel money, you can pay somebody to play catch. <laughs> I mean, and, and that is a sad state of affairs that you have to think like that. But you know, these days when women, you know, our eggs dry up by, you know, soon. And men can still go on and have kids. It is kind of selfish, but you know what? So he'll pass away eventually. <laughs> the circle of life, people, the circle of life. Uh, the, the circle of life is that he'll pass away, right? She'll still be a fairly young woman, and then she'll go out and she'll get married again to somebody more appropriate in age. So then the little girl will, she'll have memories of her dad, but she'll also have this. All right, I have to go. <laughs> let, let's, let, let's move along. Did it make sense what I was saying though? Yes. It just sounded a little crazy, right? Yes. Cause you were thinking it, but didn't have the guts to say it. Yes. Well, that's what I'm here for. Yes. Uh, and you won't believe what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> Katy Perry and John Mayer are back together for the sixth time. <laughs> no, no, believe me, believe, believe me you. I am done with both of them. But first, I must deliver the information. Okay, so 
They were on and off and on and off and on and off. Just two weeks ago, were you watching the show and I was telling you that they finally broken up and I was saying, good for Katie, don't go back to him. He got on social media and he said that he's, he wasn't emotionally attracted to her. Like he said, he said some horrible things about her as, as a woman on social media. And when you put the nail in the coffin on social media as opposed to us talking and yelling about it in the house, you've publicly shamed me. You are dead to me. And Katie, you're 30 years old. It's time for you to recognize your worth. You are, you, are you kidding me? Katie, you're a firework, okay? I mean, you sing all those good songs and you make us smile, but that, that emotional thing that you have with John Mayer is kind of pathetic. Now he's 37 and like I said, she's 30 years old. You can have anybody that you want or virtually anybody. Why him? They were seen dining and looking very cozy at the restaurant and judged by the, judging by the background, I believe it's the Palm. They're, they're famous for having the celebrity pictures on the wall, but they were seen cozy. Well, we've been following this hookup and breakup all along here at Wendy. I've got the proof, go ahead. Yeah. Katy Perry and John Mayer, they're over. And so now that they're back together for the third time because they, they were together and then they broke up. No, well, I know, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, so this thing with Katy Perry and John Mayer, well, you know, the word on the street is that they've split. Now, John is allegedly back with Katie. So Katy Perry and John Mayer have called it quits again. Yes, this will be the fifth time. <laughs> Except now, she can never go back. I was so distracted by all the different wigs and how our set has changed. <laughs> anyway, I am making an official proclamation today that thank you very much. Ever, ever, this show is so ridiculous. I can't, even, I can't deal with it. I am never, ever, 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 ever going to talk about their relationship again. Now, I might, now, let me be clear. I can talk about Katie and who else she's dating, but I will never mention the John Mayer name again. Ever, ever, ever. Done. Now it's official. Um, you want to borrow the pen? <laughs> Brandy Glanville just admitted that she's gone overboard with Botox and fillers. She said that it's very difficult watching herself age on TV. Well, that's currently what she looks like, but this is what she used to look like. Wow. I know. She's done, she's done a lot. You know, but she's a woman in her 40s. Um, you know, she's uh, on the Beverly Hills, you know, housewives, as you know. But she comes from the modeling world. Excuse me, she's tall. She was a, she was a model. Um, but I don't think that she can necessarily blame watching herself age on TV for why she gets the fillers. It's probably a whole lifestyle thing. Like she lives out there in California where everybody, everybody is getting something done. You don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be famous. Heck, even Jeff Lewis's maid Zoila got <laughs> fully done, right? <laughs> Zoila got the liposuction and she got a facelift, you know. So, so Brandy, it's not, it's not so much I think about being on reality TV, it's that you're surrounded by everybody who, you know, does a lot and too much. <laughs> Brandy, the thing about fillers is that you, they eventually settle into your skin, so if you give this like a year without doing anything, you'll eventually come back to normal. The problem is now you're gonna have empty cheeks and they'll probably sag like a, like a you, you know, you, you know, like balls, balls, balls. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you would fix that. Anyway, um, how you doing, Brandy? Speaking of addiction, Tori Spelling has an addiction. But we know this one already, it's reality TV. So her husband, Dean, just revealed that they're doing another reality show. But this one is not about the marital drama. They call it a light-hearted cooking show. Okay, clap if your question is what? Okay. Then you are my people. I, uh, you know, the problem with Tori and Dean, 
is that they've gone so far on the edge of cuckoo and, and clearly having problems individually. I think Tori's one of those people. I think they call it like Munchausen's disease when you, your child is always sick so that everybody feels sorry for you. It's like she almost has that in my mind, except for not for her children, but for herself. You know, she's always in the hospital for something. Heck, the other day they were at Benny Hanna and she tripped up. You know, you know Benny Hanna. Yeah. Okay. That look. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other day they were Benny Hanna. She just got out of the hospital but, uh, leading up to. They were Benny Hanna with the kids and Dean, and she tripped over the corner of the rug and fell back onto a flaming hibachi. Oh! Now. <laughs> <laughs> now. The burns were so bad that they had to rush her to the hospital and they did some skin grafting. My thing is that she's so bony, where are they getting the skin to graft? But they did some skin grafting and she got up off the ground like she was okay. Like there's nothing worse than, than you know, like if you have children and you know you hurt yourself, your kids feel so bad, like the last thing you wanna do is, I, I don't know, I guess cry a lot in front of them and fall down. Heck, even when I broke my pinky toe on the wall, you know, I was limping in the house. Little Kev asked me, what's going on? Are you okay? I said, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Um, so this lighthearted cooking show, I don't know about you, I don't care about watching them on TV anymore. <laughs> they have gone so far, like, problem is, is that they've gone so far to the left of crazy and problematic that there's no coming back to be lighthearted and fun. Just go away and get yeah. therapy. <laughs> and Tori's former 90210 castmate and friend to our show, Jenny Garth, Remember I was telling you that she was really upset and we were having a woo 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 moment for her last week because um, Jenny's ex father to her kids, Peter Facinelli just got engaged. And I was saying that, oh my gosh, you can never be happy for your, your ex mate getting engaged and being happy until you're happy yourself. And try as we might, and we did try hard, didn't we Hot Topics? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We could not find out. We could not find, you know, Tori in love, uh, um, Jenny in love with anybody, holding hands, coming out of the Palm restaurant, like nothing. So I was like, whoa, 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 you know, poor, this is probably the worst day of Jenny's life. Only to find out, because apparently we didn't dig hard enough. <laughs> that she too just got engaged to an actor named David Abrams. Yay! She keeps her business really quiet. Anyway, they met on a blind date last fall and I don't have a picture of the engagement ring, but they tell me it's a big black diamond. So congratulations, Jenny, and congratulations, Peter. Congratulations to all four of you. So now, did you hear the news this week about Tom Hanks' wife, Rita Wilson? She announced that she's been diagnosed with breast cancer. Thankfully, she caught it early and she's expected to make a full recovery. I know that um, I make sure that I get my mammogram every year because we all know how dangerous uh, breast cancer is, especially for women of color black girls and, and other women of color. Uh, did you know that black women though are more likely to die from breast cancer than white women or anyone else? Yeah, and that's why I wanna remind you that um, we here at Wendy have partnered up with Avon 39, the walk to end breast cancer. Yeah! Avon 39 is a two day 39 mile challenge that asks for everything you've got and we want you to join our team. All you have to do is commit to raising $1,800 and the money raised will go to help wipe out breast cancer. Avon 39 events are held in seven different cities around our country and uh, all this year, I'll be, um, or the, in this year's walk, I will be doing the New York leg. So go to, go to the link below to register right now and you'll receive a discount on your regist registration fee. Together, we can make a difference, right? Yeah.